Welcome to the wide world of esports, a show devoted to all things esports. I'm your host, Catherine Knorr. Today, our topic is improving esports performance. My guest is Dr. Christian Kuzmich, the CEO of Mindset Technologies, joining us from Austria. Welcome, Christian. Hello, Catherine. Very happy to be here on the island on safety, as I heard before. No COVID on Hawaii, so I feel uh, most confident here and uh, pretty safe. Thanks for the invitation. All right. So you know what? Let's let's uh, zoom in on the photo of where you are because uh, I'm sure that uh, I don't want everyone to have to Google it. Is that where you are? Exactly. So uh, we are in the middle of uh, of the heart of Europe. We're in Austria. Uh, near Vienna. So for many tourists uh, coming from the States, uh, worldwide actually, Austria definitely is a, uh, is, is a trip. Uh, and uh, yeah, we are near Vienna actually, very near to Vienna, but we work internationally, we work globally. And uh, for instance, we, uh, as we can see in the next slide, we have uh, one partnership uh, with, a, uh, with a Korean company. Uh, we work together in a research proposal where we want to uh, find out first of all the best training methods for esports athletes and also provide something like a biofeedback method uh, similar to a pulse watch so if you are have a look later on at our homepage, page uh, uh, it's called the pulse watch of the brain and, and this is what what it actually should be uh, what we provide there and, and put together so we are pretty international but we are located in the heart of europe also have a uh, co-founder is sitting in Switzerland. So we are somewhere in the Alpine region and then work from there. Terrific. And so what is Mindset Technologies? Is that your company? Yes, exactly. Mindset Technologies is, is our company. We are uh, two co-founders and we have a, a team of three people uh, collaborating with us, uh, machine vision lead, AI lead, and uh, a CTO. And uh, what we do is we predict attention. And the, one of the, the most interesting uh, areas where you can predict the tension is in the high performance area, which is esports or racing or uh, sports uh, that put a lot of demand on, on the person, uh, a lot of stress on the person, like for instance, soccer. So for the goalkeeper, it's a huge stress. And so we are working with goalkeepers as well uh, with a similar methodology like in esports. So do you work with the players or the teams um, in terms of um, trying to help them uh, improve their performance? Exactly. We work with both because uh, we specialize in, in, in getting the best signal, which is hard enough in the field to get the best signal uh, that, that says, OK, there is somebody who's getting tired. And getting tired means a lot of things in the area of performance because uh, uh, when you when you are very fast with the keyboard and the mouse, speed might go down. For some persons, the speed might go up, but the accuracy might go down. That means the speed accuracy per se is is, is very interesting to to have a look at. Uh, and uh, the thing is, uh, with our with our approach, we always need to have a mediator to to the team, which is the trainer. So we work together with trainers. Uh, we have, for instance, uh, one method where we put and I have the goggles here uh, where we put those uh, gaze uh, measuring and uh, monitoring goggles on players. And we can see in life uh, where the player is looking at. Uh, it's an ego shooter or League of Legends, whatever it is. Uh, we can see in life where the player looks at, where the gaze is, if there is a centering of the gaze. That means if the player is standing in the right place. and. Uh, in the post-processing, we can put that together uh, with psychophysiological signals, indicating fatigue, alertness, uh, being in the right zone, having the right mindset point, uh, all those uh, things that enable you to perform better. So are you a neuroscientist? Is that what your um, PhD is in? What's your background? Yeah, exactly. So uh, I started in, in Vienna, uh, psychophysiology. Uh, and that is actually the science of bringing uh, psychology and physiology, biology together. And uh, then I decided to go to San Diego where I started at the UCSD, uh, in neuroscience and neurophilosophy. And uh, when, I, when I did the research, especially in Vienna, I had one main topic, 
which was human computer interface. So what I did is uh, I was researching on the effect of computers, displays, uh, also interfaces on, on, on human information processing. And uh, especially I was watching the brain with uh, electrodes, uh, pretty invasive actually, because in the laboratory, you know, you have no problem putting electrodes to people. Uh, looks a little bit like a uh, Frankensteinish uh, environment there. Um, but it's a very reliable, very good method. Uh, and uh, interestingly, I had the idea to mindset uh, actually a couple of years later, because the last uh, 20 years I was working in consulting, innovation consulting and IT. And uh, I worked for a weather company, uh, a weather company in, uh, from the Red Bull empire. You know, this sweet drink from Red Bull. And they also have a weather company and I was innovation manager. So what we did is uh, improving predictions. And then I thought, okay, everything we do here uh, we could do the same with the human mind. I mean, it's, it's, it's strange. It's totally different if you have a fluid around Earth and you're predicting something. Uh, and it's not like the brain when it comes to this, but the mathematical methods behind are pretty, pretty much the same. Uh, and also the artificial intelligence applicable to it is pretty much the same. Sure, okay. So let's learn a little bit about what you do and let's look at the first um, slide. Yes, uh, tell us about this. Yes, uh, what, what you see here is uh, a combination of two things. We are working uh, with goalkeepers. And, and what we do with the goalkeepers, we take uh, those glasses here, these glasses, and the goalkeeper wears it. And uh, we go into training situations, typical standard situations in soccer, uh, like a penalty, uh, like a uh, kicking after, after fouls, uh, like typical uh, attacks. And uh, we see how the, the goalkeeper perceives the, the entire field from the perspective of the goalkeeper in real time. And then we can also see on the heat map, like here, that this is a pretty good goalkeeper, always looking straight. Uh, and, and that's a good sign because when you look straight, you are on, on the right position on your map. Uh, if you, for instance, would see a dispersed pattern with uh, a lot of yellow in the edges, around the edges, then uh, you have a very stressed goalkeeper who is constantly searching for hints, uh, how to interpret the situation. And, and, and this is a very typical thing here uh, that you can see. And this is also something that we can observe in esports, uh, especially in, in, in racing, uh, that uh, this, this centering and looking at the right place uh, mainly at the right place is uh, the, the gate to success and being better, making less uh, mistakes, uh, being faster. And, and yeah, this is, this is one typical approach here. We will also work with drones uh, and, and cameras to have uh, the, the bird's view also on the, on, the, on the field, of course. Sure, okay. So uh, let's take a look at the next picture. Okay, so tell us about this. Yeah, that is actually the basis. And that is what uh, I must say makes it pretty unique. Uh, we know in esports, uh, we are also dealing with uh, companies, we're working together with companies even, uh, that are uh, claiming to uh, change the state of mind via electrical stimulation. Uh, we look into the eyes mainly. Uh, we look at the blinks. Uh, we look at the color of the face. That means that the blood flow through the face uh, we can also see the pulse through the skin. And what we do with those uh, physiological measures, uh, we have an analytics core in a platform, the Advanced Human Attention Prediction Platform. And this analytics core, we are running uh, all the analytics coming in from uh, glasses that I've shown, from cameras, from keyboard. Uh, all the metrics are calculated there over a person. That means it's uh, personal profiling, uh, like a pulse watch. And what we do is we predict how the attention will be the next consecutive minutes. So if you are in the middle of a game, uh, in the competition, we are not at the competition level yet, uh, but uh, it will help you in biofeedback to show you where you are and you can take countermeasures when you're, for instance, stressed out, fatigued, uh, losing focus, all this. And uh, we can help with the biofeedback. And um, our approach is to go to different verticals with this uh, with this uh, platform. Um, 
because we it's it's usable of course also in the car when you're driving a car uh, you have to be attentive and uh, if you're not attentive you get a warning sometimes but even worse in uh, with autonomous driving uh, the car has to know what state you're in because it all the time it has to hand over if it's necessary and so this this type of attention monitoring system is getting much more important uh, the next couple of years with autonomous driving so we're going through also uh, all through to health so ice and their anomalies are very indicative of uh, also neurodegenerative diseases. So we have a lot of, uh, of things to cover here, but we start with the high performance sector. So the application is broad to different sectors, but it does apply to esports. Is that correct? Exactly. So in esports, this is where we also will be. This will be the only uh, sector where we also develop a software as a service. Uh, very similar to those uh, typical uh, pulse watch suites from, I don't know if it's allowed to say brands, but Polar uh, as a European brand, Garmin, Apple Watch. I mean, they all have it in there uh, to control the pulse. And we will do the same. And we will also help to design the right training because uh, we notice uh, from the uh, from the contacts in the, in the, in the esports business, from the trainers that we have, uh, that many players are playing in the comfort zone. And that is absolutely wrong. I mm. mean, when you're training, you have to be absolutely out of the comfort zone. When you are in the competition, uh, you have to be kicked out of the comfort zone if it's necessary. And then you have to feel well with this, but you have to try to stay in the comfort zone, uh, but not for the training. You need plasticity. You know, the brain only works when it's stimulated and you only learn when you have some amount of neuroplasticity and uh, this is uh, what we try to achieve by the feedback. To say, okay, what you're doing now is fine, but it's just fine. It's not more than that. You're in the comfort zone. Uh, try harder, do something else. And, and this is what we develop together with the trainers. So you use biofeedback then in what you're doing? Exactly. So uh, how we feed it back, we uh, plan to build a buff cam, how we call it, like this buff, like this lucky charm for gamers. Uh, a cam that sits on top of the monitor and uh, is individualized uh, and, and it shows it has a chip in it so an eye chip and it's uh, autonomous actually that means uh, it doesn't suck on the resources of the CPU uh, and we have also a traffic light system on the camera uh, showing the red light is on when you are uh, in the in the wrong state of mind, and the green light is on when everything is free for you and you are at your best. You are in the zone, and and this is how we uh, will feed back, uh, also together with uh, with an app, of course, with a web app and uh, and the handy app. And this is what we also developed together with our Korean partner. Okay, we do have a question from a viewer. Um, uh, do you think people with uh, ADHD will have trouble at gaming because they can't focus on one thing like the goalie in your example? Yeah, uh, that, that is a super interesting question. And I, I had a, a similar discussion today. The problem with ADHD often is that uh, the goal signal is always on. That means you're highly motivated, uh, but you're still understimulated. Mm. Um, uh, and, and that is actually the problem uh, that we find in, in every person. We have a, a certain kind of activity level. And when we are very extroverted, we are constantly understimulated and we are seeking for measures uh, to, to just get stimuli, to uh, interact with people, to just raise our activity level. And the thing is, uh, with, many, with HDHD, you're actually you're trying uh, to, to, to raise uh, the, uh, the, this level as well, because they are constantly understimulated. And once the go signal comes, uh, it's just a go signal, but it's, it's absolutely, it's an unguided missile. Uh, so what helps is, except for uh, regimes of, of drugs, which uh, I'm not a doctor uh, to, to claim uh, if it's good or not, uh, but in gaming, uh, could definitely help. I found studies where it can help when you have a focus and the go signal. It depends on the game. So if it's, there's a lot of distraction there, uh, it won't be very beneficial, but if, 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 if it's a game that can really uh, catch your attention and your focus, especially the gaze uh, of the eyes, 
they help a lot to establish this focus of attention, then uh, it could be even beneficial. I, I know one gamer very well who has HD, uh, ADHD. Uh, so um, yeah, it, it works for him. He's in the flow when he's gaming. Terrific. Okay, so let's look at the next uh, slide. Okay, and so what does this show? Yeah, that shows a typical working place of the, the world champions in sim racing uh, of, of, of First DK, uh, a esports team in Denmark. And we work together with them. And this is also a very interesting uh, topic here showing uh, the, also the limits of the method. So if we would say, for instance, we go into the car again. So we go into any car, we have a camera in there and the camera is watching us. Uh, the problem with car with car driving is it's extremely boring. Nothing happens there. Uh, so you drive your car 30,000 kilometers and the only thing that happens is snowflakes. I mean, in Hawaii, probably a volcano breaking out or something like this. Uh, that is something, you know, but it rarely happens. And so we uh, are also interested in, uh, in sim driving because of course it's a little bit like real driving. I mean, it's a big deal like real driving, uh, but things happen. So all the reactions, uh, fear, startle reactions, uh, all the reactions expecting, the gaze patterns, looking into the right angle onto the curve, uh, which is an absolute discriminator between the really good drivers and the not so good drivers. Uh, and, and, and all this uh, we can find there and we can also use it in, in other applications. And this is why we have this uh, database idea. Um, and, and, and not only this uh, single-mindedness in applications where we say it's only esports. Uh, attention doesn't work like this. It's like having a heartbeat only when you're doing training. You always have a heartbeat. And uh, the Apple Watch constantly measures the heartbeat and, and, and puts out a profile. And that's, this is the way to go for us as well. Okay, so let's look at the next slide. Okay, so I know this is a little blurry for our audience, yeah. but can you tell us about that? It's a little blurry, but it, it, it shows pretty well the two things that we use. Uh, we are already using those glasses uh, that can measure the gaze. And also, very interesting, the, the pupil size, you know. Uh, you can see the mental load when you have uh, the, the size of the, of the uh, I think it's rightly pronounced, pupil uh, in the eye. Uh, because, of course, it regulates the amount of information intake to some extent. Plus, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, nervous system hanging there and and so uh, we can also see this with the glasses and uh, on the on the right side you can see the buff cam that's just a, a sketch of the buff cam how we plan to have it uh, with this feedback mechanism uh, with the traffic light system and uh, this is where we're also looking for investors to build this camera um, needless to say COVID is not the best time for investments uh, currently because uh, traveling around is not easy but uh, we are on a good way and uh, uh, this, this will be actually also a consumer product in the end we will start with the teams and we are working with teams uh, but it will be interesting for every gamer like a, a pulse watch is also interesting for everyone who is interested in sports or self-measurement sure and that's a good comparison because uh, you know, a certain number of years ago, we probably wouldn't even imagine that, you know, everyone has, you know, one of these, but um, now it's pretty normal to have almost a huge population with wearing such watches. So let's look at the next slide. Exactly. So uh, what, what's interesting for us is also, especially in training, uh, what is the right kind of training? So uh, we are, we stay one level uh, above the application. So if somebody says you need a shooter trainer uh, for uh, being a better shot, that's one thing. Uh, what we do is we look at the level uh, whether something is automatized. If it's uh, like driving in a car, again, uh, when you learn to drive a car, nothing is automatized. You know, you have to think of everything. You're serial. You think, okay, I have to shift the gear. I know not in the States, you have automatic. But uh, now it's the, the, the gas pedal, now it's the brake pedal, and you always have it serial in your mind what to do next. And there is a stop sign, a double stop. And at some point, uh, of course, you can make a phone call uh, and you think you are parallel because you can drive and it doesn't make any effort, you know, it's effortless. And that's exactly the point. Some things have to be trained to the state that they are effortless. And other things are skills and they will never be effortless. And this is also discriminated between talents. 
of some kind. We also can use this as a talent mechanism, uh, find out who has a talent for what, because uh, being fast uh, is super when you are also accurate. So if the speed accuracy is fine, uh, it's, it, it's, it's really a gift. But if you're only fast, uh, it, it doesn't really help you. And we heard, heard it many times uh, from, from trainers that uh, the actions per minute uh, are the thing that is the key performance indicator, but it isn't. It's the, actually the accuracy in those actions. What it's, does the zone in picture show? Yes, uh, this, this is actually the, uh, if you look at this inverted U shape, this is how we all, we humans tick. And I mentioned before, when you are uh, really extroverted, you're constantly underactivated. This is a, a feature, a hardwired feature of our brain. Uh, and when we underactivated, we are see, uh, seeking stimuli. We are looking for persons we know because social interaction is very activating. Um, we look for action. We want to do something. This is this is the motivation behind it. Uh, when you're on the other side of the spectrum, on the other side of the U shape. Uh, you are constantly over uh, overactivated and uh, introvert people are constantly overactivated. So they are introvert uh, because they want to defend them against the stimuli. This is why they have quiet places, because they have quiet work, because they're not that talkative. Uh, they are over their optimum the moment they talk with somebody. Mm. And this is the zone, actually. The zone is the optimum. This is the individual zone where you feel very, really good. You feel at home, uh, you are satisfied, you're comfortable. When you have stress and competition is stress, uh, of course, people act differently to this kind of stress. Do I have the skills? Do I have to drill? Uh, as long as the drill is enough and I don't need resources for this, cognitive resources, I can perform pretty well. But at some point, when a new situation comes and the demand is higher, I might be out of the zone. And then the question is, where is my zone normally? And this is why we have to find it out in a uh, constant measuring, like also with the Pulse Watch, you need to have something like a baseline. It's not like you can measure it once and then you know it once for all. Uh, you have to have a baseline. And with this baseline, you know exactly where the zone is. And for performance, the zone is perfect. For training, it's not perfect. You need to go much harder in training. And so uh, you can use this uh, methodology for both training and for competition. So athletes need to uh, try to learn how to go out of their comfort comfort zone. Is that right? Exactly. So in training, there has to be a going out of the comfort zone. And also, and I, I find this very interesting in esports, uh, the sport is more and more professionalizing in a way uh, that uh, nutrition is a topic, uh, having sleep is a topic, uh, also doing physical sports is a topic and the brain needs that because you can only learn when we have some degree of neuroplasticity and neuroplasticity is a feature of the brain that is degrading uh, from 25 years on that means if you have a typical esports guy uh, 14 years to 22 fine they can learn extremely fast that's perfect but when you're older and uh, at some point uh, we would need professionals that are older than the current ones are then uh, you need to do the extra mile and uh, you need to be a little bit smarter in training because this plasticity is going down and uh, all the learning is not that easy anymore. Sure, okay, so then let's look at the next slide. Mm -hmm. And what, what yes. does it show? And that's actually the point what happens uh, when you are in the action mode, you can train hard, you perform hard, you neglect fatigue, you can fight it. Uh, sometimes you add stimulations like a Red Bull uh, or something else, some kind of energy drink. Uh, on the next slide, we can see what happens then when you're over the top. So if you have uh, the red sign on our buff cam, uh, you are in this pointless action mode where you're just all over the place, which means something because the gaze also is all over the place instead of focused. And uh, you train more, you train without a break, you have more stimulants. But the point is they train too long. Uh, many of the of regal players, uh, they know exactly that they have to variate the training and not play for 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day, the same game. It's like trying to win the Olympics and swimming by only swimming. It just doesn't work like this. Right, yes. right. Okay, so then uh, what's the next slide? Um, I believe we have another. 
Exactly, and that's the point, and this is what we discussed, and this is uh, what we also research uh, with the Korean partners, game over, this part, uh, where you're overtrained, you feel exhausted, uh, you lose lives, not the real ones, but you know the uh, computer lives ones, and uh, you lose also the health and the motivation, and that is exactly what should not happen, because uh, the, the career of esports uh, athletes is very short. And uh, it's not only explainable with the actions per minute and it's exhaustion and that is stressy. It's not the point. I mean, if you look at somebody playing violin or uh, piano, uh, you have artists who play until they're 90 years old. And this is also very demanding from the psychomotory side. So it's, it's much more than this. It's, it's the kind of training. And, and this is where we do the research also. So it's a lot of research also put into this uh, to make the performance sustainably better over a longer period in time. Sure, okay, so we do have to wrap it up, but I want to give you an opportunity to tell us a little bit about where your business is going and how um, those who are interested can contact you. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we are currently looking for investors for our software uh, product. We have our analytics as a service, the consulting approach. I see that uh, we have now the, the LinkedIn page uh, there. Uh, you can visit the LinkedIn page, uh, contact us, follow us. Uh, we can contact you back then, uh, have a talk. Uh, if you are a captain, a team leader, trainer, uh, it will look differently than when you are uh, an esports athlete, but we actually talk with everybody who is interested in this topic because it interests us, us so much. And so, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, thank you, Christian. I, I found that very interesting. I learned a lot. Super. All right. So. Anyway, thank you uh, to the viewer who sent in the question and thank you for joining us today. Make sure to tune in next week. My guest will be Jeff Stansfield of Esports Circus. See you then.